Hello and welcome back to another episode of Diaries of Death. My name is Iken and today we're continuing our World of Warcraft hardcore playthrough of Frost Mage. Uh, and uh, we have something spe uh, special for you. We're going into the Alderac Mountains, a zone that I haven't showcased yet, which is going to be uh, fun. We're going to go there for prison break-in as well as a couple of stone tokens and there, I think there's even a follow-up quest uh, to that quest line. So we are ready to bring the heat. Uh, question is, are the enemies going to be ready for us? Uh, slightly overleveled for this zone uh, definitely, but uh, the Alterac uh, Mountains we should be fine. Uh, they are really an interesting uh, zone. There's another elite uh, quest right here, the Crown of Will. Which again we can't do uh, in here uh, there are few quests for horde and we definitely don't want to go to the western plague lands now uh, so uh, the zone is as much as you get uh, from uh, from that uh, zone and then we do have a few more uh, quests around uh, here which is going to be the second part of today's episode and yeah so that's good let's go Good, we're starting with an alliance camp. These are officially like alliance characters. And we gotta get a couple of worn out tokens as well as uh, the marbles. So these guys here can drop worn out tokens and we shall get engaged with them. For open areas, I decided to continue running Mage Armor, mainly because of the mana regeneration benefit it offers, and we do have enough space to hide, so we're less often getting hit. Still sent uh, with my point that the Frost Armor is better and safer. Mage Armor, on the other hand, allows us to deal with these guys uh, here in a row without uh, pausing. That's the fourth pull in a row and we're still going strong. Plus, to be fair, we do have Mark of the Wild currently going for us, so that's another 150 armor, which I felt was good enough, to be fair. So that's the Bloodstone Marble. Which I think, if I'm not mistaken, we need uh, we need to uh, bring... Oh yeah, we need to bring four of uh, these bad boys. Dermot, Elena, the guy that we just killed in another one. Good, let's get the other two. And I think in, it, it, we, the last one is in here in this house. Good. 
good. Time to grind uh, down more of the Dather and Shield Guards. We'll get that on last stone and then on the fast forward as the actual grind of uh, the Dather and uh, Guards isn't that exciting. What is surprising is we haven't had a single drop. So this is the cool part about the zone, uh, this huge dome. Just got to be careful with that arc mage. And I think inside here, yep, or Inside there we do have uh, the last stone. But we don't want to let them summon the spirit of the old. That would be foolish. Uh, and there's a patrol. Always keep your eyes out for these things. Alright, counter spell is up in 8 seconds, that's good enough. Don't even need it for him, I saved it up for the other uh, purchase. There you go. Definitely pays dividends uh, to stay vigilant. Do they have shield bash? No. They have a violent shield effect. Cool, and finally some uh, tokens. That's not bad. That's one way of getting line of sight. Let's go. Oh, these guys even do have frostbolt. Tricked me into using my counter spell for her frostbolt, though. Okay, double pull shouldn't be too much of a problem. Why is that sheep running right at us? That's a bit suspicious. Fantastic. Up there is uh, our target. The warden has Cone of Cold Polymorph. I'll tell you what, the fireballs mean nothing as long as she doesn't polymorph. Well, maybe they do mean something. That actually started to hurt a little bit.
There we go. All bloodstones collected. Which means all we need to do is get a couple of worn tokens and then we're going to go back uh, there. Prison break in successful. And I'm not even sure if there is a follow up quest. Anyways, fast forwarding for you guys uh, until we trade in the quests. Very good. So it took a while, but we finally managed to get all of the tokens. And the follow-up quest is Dalaran Summoners and uh, the Elemental Slaves. So there is more to be done here, which is absolutely fantastic. I like the area. So let's get uh, right to it. All right, so we made it all the way to Dalaran, or what's left of the city, after the catastrophic impacts of uh, the Warcraft story. Good. So... We need to get a couple of the elemental slaves down, as well as, to be fair, many of uh, the Dalaran mages as well. And these elemental slaves are funny because uh, they lose strength depending on how much health they have lost. And at the very end, uh, their physical damage is greatly reduced. Still hits for a ton though. Anyways. There we go. Bracer of Earth binding. Lots of these elemental slaves over here. And then you do have the summoners, which are basically their bosses. And these guys have a nasty uh, fireball attack as the standard. And then on top of it, they do have a summoning of yet additional bodyguards. And Major Armor helps us a lot in these open regions. That's four pulls back to back to back. And we still had mana left over. After you remove all of the elemental slaves, we can easily go for the summoners. Very good, that was the last Bracer of Binding. So, Deleran Summoner. Summon a shield guard, a Fjordgist, and their fireball. And another fun fact uh, is these guys drop Rune of Opening, so if we see little containers, closed containers, inside of these buildings, like these hidden stashes here, we need a Rune of Opening in order to actually open them and they are like uh, chests in a sense so in this case broken wand and uh, griffin feather but could have been uh, much nicer i always figured that was a neat way of giving out a little bit extra loot These elemental staves have the tendency to really run quite a while. So we gotta be careful where to stand as their patrolling is often rather wide for a mob.
Interesting, another rune of opening. Don't even see enough chests here, to be fair. Ah, that might be a double pull. No. Yes. I wasn't sure if they are social. The answer is yes, uh, they are. We have no crowd control against uh, them. No hard CC. Only the slow. But, thanks to... Uh, permafrost, our stone is really good. We can easily kite them. Okay, cool. So Let's get a few more summoners down. Another rune of opening, oh my lord. Yeah, sometimes these chests are within the chimneys or whatever is left of the chimneys. Hard to spot them out, it always has been. So you end up with more runes than you can uh, reasonably use. guy luckily for us we can slow him Ten out of twelve, almost done. And with the summoners, we should be done soon as well. Summoner down is the last one. There's another chest in here in the chimney, like I mentioned it. And that could be the last, no, semi last, second last. Um, element. Very good. Good. I think we're pretty much done here. After sending this guy home, we can recall. We've got to be careful. There is a mage right there. Very good. All right, let's trade in the quests. All right, so we traded in uh, all of the quests. I also did a little bit behind uh, the scenes work and got my first aid up all the way to 225 uh, whilst trying to get 
a group together and today we're going to go uh, to the Scarlet Monastery which is three wings so four actually and the idea is that we're going to do one uh, or two of them uh, the library and the uh, graveyard uh, wing uh, we're going to leave arms and cathedral for now uh, we got a couple of uh, reoccurring uh, people. Rushnak, I think we did a gr uh, group together with. Uh, Rothschild, for sure. He's sort of leveling roughly alongside me for the last uh, uh, few uh, days or so. Uh, we got a rogue and another mage. So things are actually looking reasonably well. I will bind myself here in the Arathi Highlands for later and then we're simply going to uh, take it from there. Alright, fast forwarding so that you guys see the dungeon. Alright, so there we are. Just entered the dungeon. Let's get everything going. I will eat a bit of stat food. Everybody's actually uh, eating stat food. Look at that, our warrior Rashnag. Eats a chucks up a couple of potions. That's how it's done, guys. Very nice. Appreciate the hardcore community. Um, I think all things considered, I will start with Mage Armor for now, just to keep it a little bit better tabs. And Scarlet Monastery, the library in particular, is quite caster heavy, so it might not be the worst idea. I chuck the Shadow Absorption Potion, which may come in handy a bit later. But it's important not to cast immediately, of course. The other mage directly towards that. Very good pulls, appreciate it. And given that these guys don't hit very hard. immediately crowd control although our tank took about half of his hit point uh, and third of his hit points and damage so the moment that there are Exactly that. Uh, that's why a frost mage is so powerful if you're if you're uh, slowing the targets. 
Because then social po uh, polls cannot uh, happen. That keeps them slow. It took too long to use Will of the Forsaken. Should've done that quicker. drinking up so far the group work is really well can't complain here easy to get a couple of extra ads uh, but the tank is doing a very very nice job uh, I've seen a lot of groups kind of hugging the sides and trying to avoid as, as many uh, of the enemies as possible but that is stupid I remember back in the quote-unquote good old days, there was um, a horseman event around Halloween. I don't know if they still do that, but it always was fun. You could obtain a neat little mount. No, I think it was a head uh, dress, which looked like a pumpkin, because then you were the headless horseman. Pretty sure they don't uh, do that anymore.
clever because these guys can add when you're running out. Pretty good. All right, he does the AOE. I keep them in place. to maneuver in these really tight corners. Everybody slow down. And we're just drinking up. Good. I will just drink up here. Why did you already go those enemies? Even that I've leveled up, the whole drinking up uh, thing was absolutely unnecessary. Higher crits. Very good. Levels. Quick and dirty. Quick and easy, rather. And we're officially uh, level 37, which is nice. Well, it's good. Curiosity, what was that quest? No, no. Okay, we need to loot the wedding ring which might be somewhere. I forgot where exactly that is. Alright, we're 
in the library part now. And I definitely need a bit more mana for that, but our tank is, like I said, doing a good job. And these doubles and triples is kind of preparing you for the cathedral, which is the ultimate highest part of the dungeon, where essentially you're going to have a lot of wandering mobs and groups. So it happens more often than not that you're in a situation. Oh, oh come on. That you're in a situation where an entire group is heading. Very happy with the DPS of my build so far. Many of the fights are top DPS. Starting first, I am playing it careful. The rogue, however, is stealing quite a bit of uh, DPS as well, so that's good. What I'm surprised to see is that uh, we're not doing more CC potentially because people are over not necessarily required. But when I used to run these instances, you oftentimes hit uh, the rogue zap and kind of the, the mage uh, sheep, and that was common practice, like, it's not even a thing, you just mark your targets and off you go. People seem to not like that too much anymore. Oh yeah, I remember those uh, little uh, yards here, quite a few e enemies in them. Uh, I, uh, I think I'll just bring up... The other frost mage has not stacked the permafrost, so my frost is creating more of a slow. That's interesting. I assume he's following a cookie cutter build guide. Which is not bad, I'm not condoning that. So, Scarlet Monastery, one of my favorite dungeons. I wonder if we can push it a bit with this group and also do arms.
Good, whenever you're drinking, make sure that you're watching your back. It's easy to pull an additional uh, pack. Yeah, it's not nothing roaming, but sometimes there is. Getting some extra hit points. Monster, I remember him. All right, if he just wants to wing it, then. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. The Houndmaster was not the boss of this part. He was merely a goon. Well, I should have asked for that quest a bit earlier. to get uh, these guys sooner or later. Nice little offhand item and even more importantly a fantastic necklace that I would want. So, we're moving deeper into the past, are we? And you can see the tank marks the floats, which is clever. let anyone run away. That's all there is. And they even kick uh, the mana burn of the Scarlet Diviner. Perfect. Very well done. Oh, <laughs> 
fabulous. This is one of those spots where if you don't pull correctly, you can get both sides. Specifically, do not let anyone run away. That's the name of the game here. I will keep both of them nice and slowed. Gosh, I like permafrost. So helpful. Good line of sighting from our tank here. Of the spell cast. And it's clever to pull those rooms as well. Also, it is experience. So. Might as well. Our rope, for whatever reason, wants to solo the caster. But then determines that uh, that's not worth it and he's not staying, uh, sticking on that target. I don't know. A little bit strange. I try to tend to stick on the main uh, target so that we can simply focus it down. Unless I'm afraid of someone running, for instance. See, that's also a difference. If you can only play an instance of once um, every day, then all of a sudden the whole clearing it for experience also becomes more of a thing. It's not great, great experience, but it is quite noticeable and steady. Good pull back here so that these guys effectively aren't running back. Interrupting the renew. That's a lot of heal over time. And yeah, I was not on the main target there. Yeah. 
These chaplains by themselves are not nasty, but if you do have a lot of enemies and the chaplains are uh, on top of whatever you pull, then trust me, the amount of shields that these guys can throw out and just renews will make it very difficult for you to, uh, to focus down a target. Good. So now these guys come in pairs. Ah. Two monks not a problem. Yeah, he's pulling. Uh, well, it is noticeable though that the enemies are now level 36. That's the cool part about casters, I can interrupt them, and as a consequence, uh, I quasi heal by preventing damage. Oh yeah, 
I distinctly remember that the boss here is fun. Cast encounter. Maybe I can convince them to arms afterwards. We should be okay. There we go. Just don't let them flee. Whatever you do, just don't let them flee. The moment that they run into additional packs, shit is hitting the fan. Taking one of these guys out just eases uh, the uh, the healing so much more. Selecting the target and also free marking it. Uh, Reshnik is good. He has immediately seen that one of them is marked. It's just waited for using AoE abilities like Thunderclap, so I did need to resheep. So that was good. Just used a demo shout that typically keeps them on you, and if people don't go wild, then that's fine. And there is. Uh, kudos there is like no hunter that randomly just multi shots because he wants to do big fat dps so this group here is playing very well Alright, Arcan, uh, Arcan is doomed. Well, let's get him down. There's a couple of interesting spells. Silences, polymorphs. And has detonate, which you definitely don't want to stand in. I think that the 
this is really an upgrade. Pretty good. Three more uh, minutes and the hearthstone is up. I don't uh, want to sit here and risk pulling anything, so we're just going to teleport out. That's it. That is uh, the first half of Scarlet Monastery. And we, I think everybody loosely agreed. Um, we definitely need to come back. And we're going to do exactly that. Uh, for now, that was it. And we should be fine. Thanks a lot for watching. See you all in the next episode. Take care and goodbye.